Hi friends, Miss Joy here from the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. Welcome to Virtual Storytime. We're glad you joined us today. Today we're going to read a book called Wait, Rest, Pause, Dormancy in Nature. Now, dormancy is an interesting word. You may not be familiar with it, but I bet you know what hibernation is. Hibernation is when animals go and curl up and they slow down for the winter. Well, guess what? Plants do that too. So we're going to talk about dormancy today. And Miss Vanette is going to come and read our book. Then I'm going to take you on a short walk through the garden to show you what's going on. And I'll finish with a short exercise that I think will be fun. You know, this holiday season um, is actually a very busy time for us, right, as people. But sometimes we get overly excited or anxious, and so I'm gonna show us some exercises we can do to uh, relieve stress a little bit and to maybe rein in our excitement just a little bit and help us to feel better so that we rest and pause too. Wait, rest, pause by Dormancy in Nature by Marcy Flincham. Atkins, who lives in Virginia. If you were dormant, you would pause, waiting, resting, huddling, curling, napping. If you were a dormant tree, you would chill, rest, prepare. In your limbs, a sugary liquid would protect you from freezing inside. Tiny leaf blankets wrap around your buds. You would pause. In spring, days lengthen, temperatures rise, you unfurl. If you were a dormant ladybug, you would fatten up, pile up, stiffen up you would swarm into a ladybug pile, sharing warmth together. You would pause. In spring, you wiggle awake, feast, flit away. If you were a dormant Arctic ground squirrel, you would pack on fat, become as cold as the air, barely move. You would pause. Every few weeks you shiver for hours to warm up. As days grow longer, your heart quickens. You scurry around. You find food. If you were a dormant chickadee on a cold winter night, you would cool down. Slow your heart, save energy. Just for just a few hours, you would pause. The next day, you rise early, rev up, you fly. If you were a dormant alligator, when temperatures drop, you would move slowly, burrow into the mud, Wait out the cold. You would pause. On warm days, you come out of your den, sun yourself, seek a snack. If you were a dormant earthworm in a drought, you would curl in a ball underground, seal yourself in mucus inside a soil nest, you would pause, snug in a knot in the dry soil. When the, rain, when the rain returns, you uncurl, moisten your skin, stretch and squirm. If you were dormant, you would be silent, still, waiting just waiting until maybe the spring, maybe the warmth, maybe the rain helps you stir, burst, appear.
Thanks, Miss Vanette, for reading our story to us today. Now let's take a walk to see how the garden is getting ready for winter. You can see some of the trees have shed their leaves. They do this to conserve water and energy while it's cold outside. Isn't it interesting to see the shape of some trees without their leaves? What a twisty, twirly tree this is. I hear some geese. Oh, do you see them flying south? Here's a look down our geophyte border toward the rooftop garden. And the Japanese garden is behind that wall. Although some butterflies like the monarch are known for migrating south when the seasons change, most pollinators prefer to stay at home and ride out the cold. In fact, just like bears, many pollinators hibernate through the winter. Our Airbnb is the perfect place for them to nestle in to survive until spring. Just as we wear winter clothes in the cold, a layer of mulch keeps tender plants warm in the winter. Remember what our trial beds looked like in the summer? Full of beautiful flowers. This is what they look like now. Most of the plants have been removed to give the soil a chance to rest. Cover crops planted in our trial beds will slow down erosion and will improve the health of the soil for the plants that will be put there next spring. Garden animals like bunnies and squirrels will find a warm place to spend the winter under our bushes or trees. What a beautiful home they have. Well, we're going to wrap up our time today with a breathing exercise, something to help you slow down and rest and pause, just like the plants are doing in our garden right now. Are you ready? First, you're going to blow out with your breath, just like you were blowing a leaf away. And then you're going to breathe in through your nose, just like you were smelling a delicious, fragrant flower. You ready? All right, so then we put those together with some arm motions. So we're going to breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Can you do it with me? Ah, that's nice. And guess what? Those breathing exercises aren't just for kids. Those are good for adults too. Just make sure you have enough room to move your arms around without hitting anything, right? Well, thank you for joining us for Garden Storytime this year. We're sad we haven't been able to open our gates and have you out here yourselves, um, but we hope to open our gates real soon. And in the meantime, enjoy your winter, enjoy your dorm time of dormancy, and um, we wish you the best and hopefully we will see you the first of the year. Until then. <laughs>